Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Live Your Fire with me, your host, Josh All. Really appreciate you coming back, joining in with me again. I had a lot of fun on the first episode. So if you're back watching this again, listen to this again with me, um, I'm hoping you enjoyed the first one too. Uh, if not, I'm not really sure what you're doing, but it's okay. Thanks for being here anyway. Um, on this episode, I sit down with a young man who is doing big things and um, he's going to be doing big things in regards to this podcast network. So you want to stay tuned. You're going to want to hear uh, what he has to say, learn more about him because you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot more from him uh, in the not so distant future. So without further ado, here we go. All right. All right. Cool. So thanks again, as I said, for coming back, joining with me on episode two. So on episode one, I sat down and talked with an old man. And yes, I can call him an old man. He's my dad. I, I call him old man all the time. Um, but you know, we, I, t- I talked to a guy who was in retirement now, who has achieved a lot of things throughout his lifetime. And um you know, he's, he's written his book. I mean, yeah, there are still more chapters to, uh, to come, but as far as, you know, d- you know, going through a career path and everything like that, you know, his time is done because he has, uh, closed that book. He has retired. Good for him. He deserves it. He's worked so hard. Um, but it's just interesting that on that episode, you know, I started off with a guy who started his own business business when he was young and saw that business through 30 plus years. It's still going strong today. And now he has retired. And on this episode, I'm coming back with a conversation uh, between me and a young man, a very young man. He's more than half or less than half, more than half. I don't know either way. He's more than half the age of my dad. And uh, he's a lot younger than me and he's doing big things. And it's, um, it's really exciting. It's really exciting for me because uh, at this at the podcast network, the Get Level Podcast Network here that I'm I'm uh, working on, uh, this young man is going to be doing his own podcast here in the future. Now, I don't want to give away too much about that because that's really what we talk about on this episode. But he has been through a lot of trials um, in his you know in the in the in his short lifespan to this point. He's matured a lot. He's learned a lot. Uh, he is years beyond where I was at his age. Uh, I am super impressed with this kid. And like I said in the opening, yes, I'm going to call him a kid. This is a young man, though, who is very, very focused on his relationship with God. And he has been chasing God for years. And, you know, I, I met him here at the Summit Dover, the church that we all go to. And you know, that's, that's really the whole idea of everything that we're doing every, here. This podcast, all the podcasts, everything that's going on right now is really about chasing God and trying to really just trying to figure out what he wants us to do and trying to be obedient to our calling. And I'll tell you what, this kid takes, takes that to a whole new level. He has been doing, like I say, he's been doing it for years. He's been chasing God. He's been trying to establish his relationship, build his relationship. And that's what he, uh, that's what he wants to talk about. That's that's the path, the journey that he's been through. He had some really trying and difficult seasons in his life, and um, we talk about all of that. And uh, I, his his message, his story, everything that he talks about is so inspirational. So you know, if you're somebody out there who feels, and and seriously, we all feel like this at different times in our lives. You know, to different extents, to different lengths of time, whatever. But we all feel lost. We all feel, we have those moments, we have those times, those seasons where we feel like we just don't know who we are. We just don't know what we're doing or supposed to be doing. And uh, talking to uh, this young man really, really just opens the door to a greater understanding of, of feeling lost and trying to figure out the steps you need to take to find your way. And, um, as, as he is very adamant about finding your way is not something that you need to do before you um, work on your relationship with God. 
it's working on your relationship with God that helps you find your way, that shows you your way, that leads you to your destiny. Um, so I'll tell you what, we're, we're not, I'm not going to hold you up much longer from this. We, I really want to show this inv- yeah, interview with, with him, um, but his dreams, his visions, I mean, take it from him. He's a young man who is embracing what he has been called to do, and he's living it every day. And then uh, we even talk about a second passion of his that's very interesting. Um, and it's not, <laughs> it's not something that I pictured him doing. Um, when I first met him, but then as I got to know him, I'm like, wow, I can see you being very successful with this as well. So without further ado, let's get to the conversation and here we go. All right. So we actually, it's, it's interesting. We just finished, well, I just finished two episodes of a podcast with the summit and then you came in on the second one. So we just finished that one up and I completely forgot that this kid right here is, and I hope you don't mind me calling you a kid. I mean, yeah, I, no, wish, fine. <laughs> I, I still like when people call me a kid. I'm like, sweet, <laughs> but you're leaving. Yeah. You are leaving town soon. So I know we had talked about doing a podcast together for my new show. Um, so it was kind of now or never, cause I'm leaving on vacation here in a couple of days. Right. So I'm sitting here with Skylar Holman, um, a young man, kid that I just, <laughs> I just met you like what? three months ago maybe yeah it's it hasn't been that long but it seems like it's been a while now it it does it does and i don't know if that's COVID or if that's yeah i don't know we've done a lot of a lot of these shows together right um it's been a lot of fun but yeah we're going to be doing more shows together which is pretty cool so (laughs) so skylar is going to continue uh being on summit up we're gonna uh video call him in so that'll be a lot of fun he's got his own mic set up and everything so he's good to go don't worry about the uh, <laughs> audio quality he's got that down um but you're gonna do your own show yeah you've got a podcast show that you want to do you're gonna run it on the get level network which is going to be awesome can't wait to to hear it so why don't you tell people a little bit about your show what it's called and the philosophy behind what you want to do yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm really excited for this. Honestly, I think it's just a great opportunity, and I've appreciated that everything that you and Kyle and the team's done for me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start up a show called Welcome to the Table, and I think it's just it's amazing. It's this dream that God's really implanted in my heart of sitting down and just talking through and discussing in a safe and loving way what is going on like issues and different topics and things that we're struggling or dealing with as young adults in the church. I think that there's so much that this age group in this generation is just dealing with on a day to day basis. And there's no more like time better than now to start showing them hope, which is exactly what we've been crying out for. Okay. So talking about our struggles in a safe and loving way, Wow. See, do, do you see what I mean now about this kid is years beyond, you know, his, his age, as far as his maturity level. I mean, this is crucial. This is something that we're missing in our society right now. I mean, with the negativity on Facebook and social media and everything else, all the bad, you know, news in the media, when, when do young people, when does the next, you know, the up and coming generation that's going to lead the world, lead the country and everything else, you know, in the future, where do they have a safe and loving platform to sit down and just talk about their struggles? Honestly, I mean, to honestly talk about them. So that's what Skylar is opening up a platform for people to do. And then for other people to listen to those conversations and to say, yes, I agree with that, or no, I don't agree with that, but in a safe and loving way. And I think that's so important. So that's why his show is going to be a huge success. I, I, I just know it. Can't wait for it to start. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that there's such a rise. I know um, facts that I've, I've learned by doing podcasts and stuff with people around town here. In, uh, I think it's in our county where we're at a 283% increase in drug overdose and deaths in the first six months of 2020. Wow. So when we talk about drug addiction, you know, it goes back to people are searching for something to fill the void, to fill some sort of a hole. There's some sort of, there's something missing, right? There's something missing in their lives. Right. And, and that's, you know, unfortunately people seek out, 
you know, unhealthy means to satisfy that, right. That absence. Yeah. But you, what you're talking about is introducing them to, you know, what they can find in God because when we're searching for mm. something, that's, I mean, that, come on, that's what we're looking for. Right. We're all searching for something. We're all, we have voids, like you said, mm. and we have pains and hurts and stuff. And, you know, we turn to things like drug and drugs and stuff like that of where we're trying to either temporarily fill it or even distract ourselves from the pain or what we're going through. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so important that we come into this realization of just who Jesus is and what he has to offer. And that is something that Jesus doesn't come in to distract us from our pain. He doesn't come in to fill temporarily our pain. He comes to heal it and move us forward into wholeness. Okay. I, I'm not going to cut in on this interview every time that uh, I, I want to say how impressed I am with Skylar, but you hear this kid talking right now? This is a, a very impressive young man. And ah, man, I'll tell you what, just listening to this interview back, I am getting so excited for his podcast. How old are you? <laughs> 20. <You're> <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, I love hearing, you know, a 20 year old. I did not talk like you at 20. Right. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there were holes, there were voids. Uh, Absolutely. And, um, I think that it's so cool that what you're trying to do or what you're going to be doing with young mm -hmm. adults. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many of these conversations are being had or if they're being had well. Right. But I know that you're going to do that. Right. And I know just from my personal experience, I've had very little discussions and conversations with people about this stuff, especially like in the church. And it's like, as someone who has been through a lot and who has come into a relationship with Jesus and an encounter with God and my relationship has become real, it's like, I can't just sit here and not reach others. I can't sit yeah, here do something and just, about it, right? I, I have to be like, you know what? I know where you're at and I can, I can show you what, what there is. I can show you that there's a hope and it's a person and it's someone else. It's, it's not anything I could offer. It's not anything you could offer. It's not anything anyone on this earth can offer. It's something that only Jesus can do. I love it, man. Cause that's, so my show, the one we're on right now, and I almost lose track sometimes <laughs> of what show I'm talking on, but no. So this is Live Your Fire, and it's all mm -hmm. about finding a fire inside of you. And we just talked a whole lot about passion and, and yeah. fire. And yeah. just knowing that, you know, what you're passionate about is a, an, a key indicator into what you should probably be doing. Yeah. If you're really passionate about something, it doesn't mean that that's the exact thing that you need to be doing. Like, right. for instance, I'm very passionate about fantasy football. <laughs> doesn't mean that God's calling me to play fantasy football all day, every day, as hard <laughs> yeah, as I can. Right. But don't get me wrong. If I could play fantasy football uh, all day, every day, all day long, I probably would. But maybe there's something there. Right. You know, and, you, and, and it's worth investigating. Is there, are there personal connections in my life that I'm missing? Mm. And maybe that's the entrance into that. Maybe I can end up having, you know, fancy football league with some friends or whatever, who maybe they're struggling with something I don't even know about. Yeah. And through the interaction, maybe something I say or do or show them can, you know, enlighten them. Who knows? Yeah. But your passions are doorways to what God's trying to do through you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that God is a God that is very, He's very intentional with the way that he goes about things. And in that case, he has planted these desires and these passions in us for a reason. Okay, and, so go ahead, finish. And I, I just think that because he's planted those in us, he wants those to, he doesn't plant passions and desires in us just so he can say, eh, I'm going to quench that and use you in a different way because I know that you really like that. He doesn't do that. Now, if it becomes an idol, then maybe he'll like are you willing to give that up? But if you have a passion for something, he wants to use that fuel and that fire towards exalting his name and seeing his glory through it. Right. Your passion will, will steer you towards your purpose. Right. And that's what we're all looking for. I mean, come on, nobody listening to this, nobody out there in the world is going to say, I don't want to have a purpose in life. Right. Come on. We all do. We all do. We're all looking for that. Right. So you said that, you know, God, He'll lead you. He mm -hmm. does nothing, you know, unintentionally, like everything's intentional. Right. So let's talk about your journey. 
Yeah. So you have found this passion in God and you want to share it with other people, your age, your generation, because you see a need there. Absolutely. You see a lacking and you want to fill it. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. Yeah. But you didn't just wake up one day and say, it's what I want to do. Got no. it. It was a journey, I'm sure. And oh, yes. Let's hear about it. It was a long process, honestly. Um, I would say I grew up in the church. I went through the motions. I didn't even, I didn't even really know what, my relationship with God really looked like or what that was all about. Um, I mean, I was, it was 16, 17 before I even like really had a true encounter with God where I was like, Whoa, do you remember what it was? Um, I know that I had some encounters. I think like a lot of people say that they've had an encounter of like in a specific date and stuff. And I have a couple of those, but I think along the beginning, it was more so of God was slowly revealing himself to me in, in a way of where I was being challenged by a, um, a new youth group that I entered. And these youth group leaders were really challenging me to saying, is your relationship with God real to you? And it was like questioning everything that I knew growing up of like, well, I mean, I know God's real, but like, I couldn't answer those whys. Like a lot of it was just because, oh, my parents told me, oh, my parents told me, or, oh, this is what my parents believe. But it was that continuing to like seek God in a way of like, I actually want to meet you and I want to come into an understanding of what a relationship with you looks like. And so I don't necessarily have that initial moment that I can think of. It was more of a slowly like him revealing himself to me. I can relate to that. Cause that's kind of what this last year here yeah. at the summit Dover has been for me. Um, like I've always like, I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. I always believed in God. I never lost like my, my faith. I just, I didn't really know what to do with it. Right. And you know, you, you get told so many things. And I think when we're young, you know, we're kids, we're growing up, we're not mature enough to really understand a lot of these bigger concepts. Right. Um, and sometimes grown ups can, or sometimes grownups don't convey things the best right. to kids and you can get confused. Absolutely. Um, so I spent years thinking, well, I know what I think about God. I know the way that, that I believe he is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm good with that. And then I, you know, I came here and all of a sudden pastor Rob is tell, talking about these things every Sunday, exactly what I had in my mind and my heart all these years but he's putting it into text, right? Like he's actually giving me like words and, you know, messages, you know, every Sunday I'm like, wow, that's exactly what I have always believed. Mm -hmm. But now it makes sense because I really am understanding who God is and it really helped me understand who I am. Yeah. Uh, Real quick, just a, just a shout out real fast to the summit Dover. Um, we're at uh, 302 East Slingleaf Avenue in Dover, Ohio. This church is phenomenal. I mean, if if you're lost at all out there and you're, you know, you're looking for a place to find yourself, to find a relationship with God, man, I tell you what, join us uh, on a Sunday at 10 a.m. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely. And I think that's so important. I think that's something I'm really passionate about is just seeing so many people come into that identity because that's what it is. It's just all of us trying to strive for that purpose through our finding our identity. You know, I heard a saying once that um, all of our problems that we face in life and all of our issues and different things, our mistakes and all that, they come from a distorted view of who we believe God is. Because if we see God as someone who is anything less than perfect or in any way, then it's easier for us to make mistakes because if we don't believe in a perfect God, then we don't believe and we can't see our full identity of who we truly are and who we were created to be. It's powerful. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> powerful stuff. And I'm excited yeah. for you to be able to walk this journey with others, mm-hmm. you know, and, and take what you've learned and what you're still learning. Absolutely. And guide others to, to come alongside that because it's, it really is. It's life changing. It's powerful. Um, we talk about passion. We talk about finding what you really are meant to be doing in life. And that's it's kind of step one. Yeah, you know, you absolutely. Go to God. Yeah, um, and I would I would say I feel like I've come a long way, but I feel like I have even such a longer way to go. Well, and that's another thing. So I, I had a quote one time, forget who said it, but they said, you never finish product. Right. 
Okay, so I do remember actually now who uh, who gave that quote, kind of because I just looked it up. Uh, Brandy L. Bates said, never accept yourself as a finished product. Be a finished product when you die. As long as you have breath in your lungs, expand yourself. So uh, thank you to Brandy L. Bates, and I'm going to go ahead and come clean. And I actually heard that quote first time from Freddie Kitchens. Oh, that hurts to say, but uh, I guess in all reality, Freddie proved that he was not a finished product either. So thank you, Mr. Kitchens, and um, Godspeed. You are always improving one way or another, like you're never done. So anybody out there who thinks, all right, I've reached it. I've, you know, achieved everything I can achieve. Nothing left for me. No, you're, you're wrong. Like there's more, you can keep going. So, all right. So high school. Yes. And then, well, let's talk, let's, let's talk about your transition from high school into what you did after high school. Yeah. So, um, in high school, I was kind of, kind of going through the motions too, of like, you know, I'll probably just get a job and stay in the area after, um, I graduate. But then I had real quick, did you have anybody talking to you about, about what you really wanted to do? With your not just like oh what do you want to what do you want to go study or what do you want to do after you know in the real world I had world. a lot of those questions mm-hmm. but I didn't really have a whole lot of people that would sit down and say Skyler what do you what do you want to do with your life like maybe my parents a little bit mm-hmm. they definitely were awesome and they did sit down and talk to me a little bit through that but it wasn't until I really had an encounter with God in when I was I was seventeen and I remember at camp and I just knew at this camp that I was, I was getting this vision of the Lord was just speaking to me and he was saying, Skylar, I want you to go here. And so I made a choice to follow that. And I stepped out in obedience and I went to a Bible college. And Where so at? I went out in California in San Dimas. It's you cold. went all the way out to Cali. I did. I did. <laughs> and it was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> How's the weather out there? Is this, I've never been, honestly, I've never been to California. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice. It really is. Southern California is amazing. So but yeah, so I went out there and um, I decided to chase after ministry because that's where, you know, God changed my heart completely of wanting to just, you know, this feeling of eh, I'm just going to do whatever to this feeling of I want to just pursue ministry in the heart of that. And I want to be that's all I want to do. And so I moved out there with that. And how long are you out there? I was out there for a year. A year. OK, mm-hmm. so I mean, what? What happened? I mean, did you, did you finish what you set out to do in California? I did not No. So I had this, I think this is something that God's just brought me a lot of places and taught me a lot of things through this journey. And I, I just keep learning everywhere I go (laughs) real quick for, I mean, yeah, because I think it's good to talk about this real quick. What do you mean when you say Bible college? Because there's probably people listening. They're like Bible college. What's that? So this was a, this is a Bible college, um, which they, are a Christian college. And so you actually have to be a Christian um, and fill out a saying that you believe in Jesus in order to actually attend. Okay. Um, however, my, uh, my year there was, it was filled with ups and downs for sure. And like all seasons, we have our ups and downs, but um, it was a really tough season for me. And it was something where God grew me a lot. And I, I had this expectation of what college was going to be like. And I think God was like, you know, I know you had this expectation, but that's not always the way that it goes. I had this expectation that I was going to go, I was going to grow like crazy. I was going to be jumping into ministry and everyone around me was going to be just on fire for the most part and ready to chase after God with everything. And man, was I not met with that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it was, it was like I was met with so much of people that were just going through the motions, so many people that were just going there because their parents were making them. Like, and, you know, I had problems with the institution itself of like, I was chasing after God and I wanted to, I wanted to grow. But I think that the problem I had was there was a replacing of what I believe is a foundational truth of our foundation of our identity and stuff all rides on our relationship with Jesus. And I think that this, this, um, institution, I think a lot of Christian education, higher education, um, places do this. And I don't think that they do it intentionally, but I think that they're replacing and trying to, instead of making that the foundation, solidifying that and building upon it, we're, taking it and we're replacing it with the wisdom of men and knowledge and tradition and 
things and tools that work. Hmm. The wisdom of men. Okay. Yeah. Skylar's right about that. That can be dangerous. I mean, just take a, take a trip through history or whatever they taught you in school and just think about the wisdom of men. Uh, you know, death, plague, wars, the whole fiasco we're living in now. So if you want to follow the wisdom of men, that's basically what you're going to end up with. This is how you interpret the Bible. This is the cultural context of the Bible. This is blah, 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 blah. You got to go through all these. And this is how you prepare a three-point sermon. They're not bad things. But when they replace the whole relational intimacy aspect of our walk with God, they're really dangerous. And that's kind of the... um religion over relationship mindset absolutely so i can see why you would struggle with that yeah because you're very you are 100 percent uh relationship oriented as far as you know with people and with god i yeah. mean it's not about religion it's not about what anyone's telling you you have to do or anything like that follow these steps and you'll right. get to heaven one day <laughs> and it's not like that right no so. absolutely and so i made that decision of i really sought it out with god and i just decided you know i can't be here anymore and you were 19? 19 at the time, yes. Oh, yeah, you were not going to hear those kind of things out of my mouth at 19. That's a young age to be going through something like that. I mean, Absolutely. college is tough for anybody. I mean, you know, I, it was for me. I remember I was a straight A student in high school all the way up through. I mean, I barely had to study for tests. People hated me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I just, I get it. Like, I just get all this stuff. It I understand does. it. <laughs> and then I went to college and while well, we were on quarters, so after my first uh, quarter at Ohio State, I was on academic probation. <laughs> I was one, uh, yeah. another academic probation quarter away from being kicked out of school. Wow. That's how bad it was. Yeah. I didn't know how to study. Right. Um, but it's kind of the same thing, right? So I could either accept my fate and say, oh, I'm not meant for this and walk away, or I can change the way I was thinking about it and really, you know, separate, okay, this is what I came here for. This is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. You can get rid of all this other stuff that's distracting yeah. me and, you know, really keeping me from learning how to study and, and get ready for my tests and all that stuff. And I got done in four years. I, I ended up, I had to retake a class or two. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be my push for, if you are not a hundred percent sure what you want to do with your life uh, coming out of high school, but you, you know that you want to go to college for something, but you just don't know what, go to a community college, save the money, stay at home, do what you need to do. Figure out if college is actually for you because I mean, luckily enough for me, I was able to figure it out and, and get myself back on track, but it's not going to be like that for everybody. So, you know, uh, college is a lot of money. College is expensive and it's an expensive mistake if it ends up being a mistake. So, you know, you can minimize your risk of making that mistake. You know, go to a local community college, even if it's only for half a year, just, just see how the fit is. See if college is a fit for you and see if you're a fit for college. It's tough, but so you're 19 years old and you're going through that, yeah. that whole transition of this isn't what I came here for. Right. So you left. Yeah. I decided to go back and um, be with my family. Um, you and fly back or drive back? I drove back. How was that? It was a long drive. You drive out there too? Yes. Nice. Uh, How long is the drive? It's a 37 hour drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a long drive. Uh, but for a 19 year old kid, that's got to be a blast. Yeah. No, because um, when I went out there, I went out with my dad and- Man, that has got to be one of the best trips ever. Yeah. Just sure. spending that time with my dad was awesome. So you awesome. have a good relationship with your dad. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Good. I have a good relationship with both my parents, which is such a blessing. That's awesome. So, but um, yeah, so I go back and I just wanted to take that next season of like, okay, let me refocus and see what the heck is going on in my life because things are being shifted all over. God was stretching me a lot. And I was like, okay, where am I at? Where am I going now? And that was tough. Yeah. That was a little bit of a rough season because I felt like I was spinning out of control a little bit. And I was like, I understand where I'm, what I've been through and stuff, but like, how do I move forward from all that? So this would have been last year, 2019. Yeah. Uh, about what, I guess, what month did you come back to Florida? Came back at the very beginning of June. Okay. So, so so you were back in Florida then for six, seven months or so? Yeah. About seven months. Right. Yeah. So, so then talk about your next transition. Yeah. And then I decided to come back up here. (laughs) I really felt like 
you know, I needed some direction. I needed some momentum and I needed to get out of, I needed a shift because I was stuck in my environment a little bit. Let me rewind real quick. You might've said this and maybe I just didn't hear you. I'm sorry. So you were originally from this area in Northeast Ohio. Yes, absolutely. And so when, when did your family move to Florida? My was family it? moved the summer where I graduated and moved out to college. Okay. So you graduate, say I'm going to California. Mm -hmm. So they said, all right, enough of this snow. We're going to Florida. <laughs> Basically. Okay. <laughs> I can't blame them. Right. I mean, geez, <laughs> Yeah. It gets cold up here, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, so that way, all right. So when you left California to Florida, where your family was, but then you decided mm -hmm. to come back up to Northeast Ohio. Right. Too much sun down there. Yeah. I just, I <laughs> felt like I was, I was stuck. I yeah. felt like I needed some, I needed direction. I needed to move somewhere. I needed to do something, get out of that environment of just struggling. Okay. So Skylar went from Ohio to Florida to California or whatever, Ohio to California to Florida and then back to Ohio, California, Florida, Florida, California, Ohio, hot, hot, beautiful weather, nice and warm, blistering cold. But he came back here to try to find what he had been missing in those other places. And I can't speak for him, but having just talked to him and seeing the passion and energy that he left here with to go back to Florida, because I think he, uh, you know, I think you saw the writing on the wall, you know, it's a uh, summer's ending and it's going to get cold soon. So what better time to go to Florida, right, Skylar? Anyway, but no, he, he took with him the passion and energy that he came here to find and he found it. And now he's going to go back down there with his family and he's going to do amazing things. We're, we're obviously staying in touch with him and uh, I just cannot wait to see what he's going to be doing. So, I mean, but what, I guess, what made you come here, back here though? What was there a, a person, some people, a place? What was it? I really wanted to come back and um, I wanted to be about my, my family in a sense, not my, not my family by blood, but I had church family up here. Okay. And so I wanted to come up and I wanted to get into ministry and I wanted to um, just go back to my old church and be activated in that sense. So kind of go back to where it started. Right. Yeah. And uh, just um, pour out and give back and um, just grow there. So that's that's what really made me decide to take that next step to come back up here. That's, I tell you what, I mean, that is a, that is a very powerful story for a young, a young adult. Yeah. Um, it's very mature. I don't, I don't know how many 19 year olds would, you know, have that kind of, down to earth conversation with themselves and be completely honest like that. Yeah. But well, it did. wasn't easy. Yeah, it definitely wasn't easy. I mean, there was a lot of tough times. There was a lot of being alone with God and just being like, God, like everything going on. I, I just, I can't handle this. This is so, so stressful. This is so like, this is not at all what I, what I wanted to do or what I wanted to go through. What is going on? Like, God, where are you at? had those moments. Mm -hmm. And I think that God just like consistently was there along the way through all of it. And that's what has gotten me through everything. So now you're going back to Florida. Yeah. So looking back on this whole journey now and everything, you say God was really stretching you. Absolutely. For what? You know what I mean? Like, do you, do you see it now? Do you yeah, see? Yeah, I definitely see most of it's, it's not, super clear, but it's a lot less foggy than it's been. And I think that God's really been stretching me and growing me in a way of, you know, I think we're getting into a season and a time on the earth and stuff where it's really, God is about to do some amazing things. God's going to move in big ways. I think so too. And I think that it's time for the church. It's a season of the church becoming awake and stepping into what we're called to be and what we're called to do. And because of that, we have as individually as believers, we have a, a task and a responsibility to get in the right place with God where we are not, we're just in the right place with God and where we're doing good. It's where we're in a right place where we're connected with him. We're hearing him and we're ready for him when he says go to go. Yeah. And just real quick as a side note for anybody, if you ever, or anyone ever tells you, you got to get right before you can go to church and, you know, 
connect with God, that is backwards. Yeah. You do not have to get yourself right before you can connect with God. You need to connect with God in order to get yourself right. Uh, back to the wisdom of man uh, conversation from earlier. If you're relying on yourself, right, to get yourself right, uh, well, you're, you're man or woman. So you're relying on the wisdom of humanity, yourself, to get yourself right. Uh, good luck with that. Absolutely. Because you cannot get yourself right. No, no matter how hard you try. And that's the spiral. And that's kind of what a lot goes on around here. That's the spiral of religion over relationship. That's it's yeah. an issue right. that we're trying to rectify. Well, uh, a picture that I was once given with this um, is if Jesus was knocking on your door and your house was a mess, would you say, hold on, let me clean up first? Or would you just open the door and let him clean up? My wife would say, hold on, I need to, <laughs> you can't see the house like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, perfect example, because of course you're going to let him in. Right. I'm not going to shut the door in Jesus's face. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I think that that's so important that like, and that's why God's been stretching me so much is he's like, Skylar, I'm going to get you ready and I'm going to get you right. So that when I'm ready to do stuff and I'm ready to move in your life and what I want you to do you are already walking with me and connected so you know how to go about it. Because I think that we, we, um, we know so much that we have to do what's right. We, we, have, we have this obedience of we follow what God's calling us. But I think it's so very, even more important how we go about that. Yeah. I think that the way that we do things really determines what happens and the reality and the outcomes. Yeah. Absolutely. And you don't know what impact you're going to have on people 20 years from now right. based on the experiences that God put you through or stretched you in this time. So you had difficult seasons, but you might look back on those and say, thank you, God, so much for that. Yeah. One day they'll make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and you said he doesn't do anything unintentionally. Right. So yeah, I mean, there's the thing is there's there's a reason for things if you just if you just got to be honest with yourself you got to look yeah. for them you'll find them yeah and i think that all comes from really developing and um having that quiet time in that relationship with god where you're really taking those things before him and you're saying okay god like let's evaluate what's going on like yeah. take everything that you're going through and stuff and just say okay god like i'm gonna process it process this through with you because I know that you are going to have insight that I can't see and your insight is perfect. So, yep. So now you're going back to Florida fired up for a podcast. That's right. Now, <laughs> uh, I mean, tell me, be honest with me, if, but would you have gone down there and started a podcast if you hadn't had the podcasting experience up here? No, in our absolutely studio. not. <laughs> okay. Well, I, and you, you say, oh yeah, I was going to do this anyway, Josh. You know. No, <laughs> no, honestly, I wouldn't have. Hey, thanks for bailing me out on that, Skylar. I was actually prepared to pay you to say that. You know, I've always like, I've, I've listened to podcasts and stuff before and I really enjoy some of them, but I've never really had a big desire to start one. I was kind of the same way. Like before we started doing this, I, I listened to podcasts all the time and mm -hmm. thought, oh yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I don't know what I would talk about. Right. Um, sometimes you just somebody sticks you in front of a mic and you're like, Oh, I guess I'm going to talk. And then yeah. you start to realize, <laughs> Oh, okay. I kind of know what I want to talk to people about. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that that's like my experience here was, yeah, I'd love to, you know, try that out and see what that's like. I, I, I like to be adventurous. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of my personality and who I am. But, um, I, I think that just this whole experience of working with the team and just being on the summit up and stuff like that has been, kind of like God helping reveal kind of a passion of like that he's stirring up in this. Yep. I'm, I'm the exact same way. Cause none of this would have ever happened, <laughs> you know, if I hadn't at least started the podcast for the summit. Right. And kind of, I've never really talked on a mic before, but you kind of develop a voice for it and I'm still not all that great, but you know, episode, you know, 200 of this show, it'll be a whole completely different story. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but are you before, one last thing I want to talk about before we end here, because I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> are you going to do your own theme music? Because you've got another mm. uh, yeah. passion, I guess, <laughs> right? Another thing you like. I think it'd only be fitting. Yeah. I think it would be 
it'd be a disservice to myself and to others <laughs> to not do that. You might as well get your own content <laughs> out there on your own content, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, you're a rapper, right? I, I am. All yes, right. I am a, a songwriting rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not laughing because I think, I think it's awesome. I yeah. just, I, I honestly, I think I've heard, Kyle played me a little bit of something you were putting together once with, uh, really Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin Coburn here at the church, but it was, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So are we going to have any tracks? Hopefully. All right. I'm definitely going to be, uh, really trying to focus on a lot of that too. When I move down. That's awesome. So everybody needs to, you know, stay tuned and yes. follow Skylar's journey on the podcast and with his rapping career. Love it. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So can't wait to hear your theme music and you're going to have a great show. Thank you. I yep. really appreciate it. All right. Round of applause. Round of applause. Skylar did a phenomenal job on the podcast. Um, big takeaway. He wants to start a new podcast of his own called Welcome to the Table, and he's going to give young people a, or he's going to have conversations with young people to let them talk about their struggles in a safe and loving way. That's amazing. That is that is so cool. And I just, you know, whenever he was telling me about the, the premise behind the show and what he was planning to do, I was like, dude, you do it. Go for it. Take it and run because it's going to be a hit. It's going to be a success. So... Thank you, Skylar. Skylar Holman, everybody. Uh, Skylar, you have impacted me too and everything that I'm doing here. Can't wait for your podcast to start. Everybody, please uh, stay tuned to not only this show, but to all the shows on the Get Level Podcast Network. And we will be announcing when Welcome to the Table is up and running and ready to ready to rock and roll. Um, you are not going to want to miss that podcast, let me tell you. Um, so I, I know I, I bashed Ohio weather a little bit in this episode. Um, so if I offended Ohio, I'm sorry, Ohio. I love you. I live here. I chose to live here. I'm choosing to live here every day. Um, my wife hates me for it, but this is my home. I love this place. Um, and on the reverse side, I do, in fact, hope that I offended Freddie Kitchens because let's face it, last year was terrible. If you don't wear brown and orange, you don't matter. Um, with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you again for tuning in. Um, producer, do we have any, by the way, there's no producer over here. I'm talking to an empty chair. I feel a little crazy. Um, but do we have any tracks? Do we have any rap tracks from Skylar that we can play to close out the show? We do. Oh, okay. Everybody, here we go. This is Skylar Holman. This is uh, a rap track that he has shared with us. Um, and until I talk to you next time, remember, be quiet, listen to yourself and you will find your fire. No wonder I couldn't recognize myself. I wasn't being who I was made to be. I was a fraud and a fake, but that's all behind me now. Gotta move on to better things, but the question remains, how, 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 how? Real recognize, real feel like can't nobody see me. Real recognize, real feel like I don't see nobody else. Real recognize, real finally beginning to see myself. <laughs>